Hello you all, I am Dr. Anahit Ali, working as Assistant Professor at James Lane Institute, Switzerland. Today I am here to talk on public health implications of migration and conflicts globally. Be it a migration, which is because of some reason, specifically if we uh, talk about conflict as a reason for migration, um, in various countries that we see even today. Such conflicts and associated migrations can have severe and far-reaching health consequences that can affect individuals, communities and even entire populations of a country. The impact of such conflicts on public health is quite complex and multifaceted that en encompasses both the direct and indirect effects. Global migration and conflicts are interconnected phenomena that often intersect in various regions around the world, be it the Syrian civil war or the ongoing conflict and political instability in Libya or be it the civil war in South Sudan. These have led to significant internal displacement and forced millions of people to migrate from their home countries in um, neighboring countries and beyond to seek refuge. So as a public health professional, as a researcher, as a practitioner, and even if you are a student, it is crucial to understand that how such conflicts, how such a uh, Global migrations that we are seeing today can lead to conflicts, um, challenges, and even geopolitical implications for the countries that are experiencing conflicts and even those countries that are receiving those migrants. These uh, migrations on a global scale and these uh, conflicts can have a significant public health implications that can affect individuals as i said no, uh, even communities and even entire nations so uh, looking at some key uh, public health considerations associated with these migrations and conflicts uh, physical health is one of an important and major aspect of health that is mostly affected during such situations, even during migrations, uh, specifically uh, the displaced populations, refugees often face inadequate access to healthcare services, clean water, safe drinking water and sanitation facilities and this can lead to the spread of infectious diseases and even increase in malnutrition rate specifically among uh, children and pregnant women. After uh, physical health, equally important is the mental health uh, that is affected because of conflicts, because of migration, and uh, there could be, for example, forced displacement and even the trauma that is uh, associated with the, the conflict, with any such uh, situation. For example, if there is a war situation in the country. So all these... Uh, Trauma and the forced displacement that is associated can contribute to various mental health disorders uh, among the affected populations such as depression, anxiety and even post-traumatic stress disorder. And as a result, because of forced displacement, as I just said, uh, it can lead to crowded living conditions, even uh, as I mentioned, poor living facilities, poor sanitation facilities, uh, all these uh, situations increase the risk of infectious disease transmission among the people, among the populations and specifically diseases like uh, tuberculosis and respiratory infections and other major vector-borne diseases may spread more easily in such poor living environments. Looking at the disruption of uh, healthcare services, uh, conflicts and war situations and the associated migrations uh, often disrupt healthcare infrastructure making it difficult to control and manage disease outbreaks and even 
it disrupt the entire system to provide basic necessities basic uh, quality healthcare services if even if you look at the primary healthcare service it becomes really challenging for the entire system to provide adequate and quality healthcare services to the people who are in need and as a result what we see is um, poor access uh, there are various uh, barriers and challenges that people face uh, specifically when we uh, talk about the migrants and the populations that are affected by the conflicts uh, they face barriers to accessing those healthcare services even the basic healthcare services uh, including uh cultural differences and then there is a uh, language difference then there is discrimination they face and then there are also uh, legal restrictions that they face and suffer from so uh we can say that uh, in terms of the healthcare infrastructure the conflicts can damage or even destroy the uh, healthcare facilities in a country and thus reducing the availability and quality of healthcare services for both the displaced and the host populations nutritional challenge is another important impact i would say um, because migration and conflict can disrupt uh, food production within a country and even it can disrupt the distribution of the food items the basic food items that are required for living and leading to food shortages and as a result there is increased malnutrition rate among the affected populations specifically children and pregnant women as i uh, listed out the mental health disorders uh, including depression anxiety and even uh, post traumatic disorder uh, the psychological health is also affected so overall we can say the mental health of the people is affected uh, specifically the individuals that are affected by the conflicts may experience not just the mental health disorders uh, maybe in the later life but even they may experience trauma grief different negative feelings and emotions and even increased uh, stress levels contributing to various mental health challenges and as a result they develop mental health disorders and this is true not only for those who are directly involved in the conflict but also for the host communities who are dealing with the social and economical impacts of this global migration and conflict situations overall uh, looking at the public health systems uh, conflicts can strain public health systems making it more challenging to provide essential services such as vaccinations to the people maternal and child health care and even disease surveillance it becomes challenging to maintain regular disease surveillance for 24 seminars so overall we can say migration and uh, conflict can exacerbate uh, the existing economic disparities impacting health outcomes and displaced populations may face higher levels of poverty as a result making it difficult to access healthcare services and maintain good health during such tough situations to address such a uh, tough situation and affected public health the phrase leave no one behind is a key principle for uh, the 2030 agenda of uh, sustainable development and particularly goal 3 that focuses on ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being of the people among the people of all the ages and when it comes to migration and when it comes to public health research this principle underscores the importance of addressing the health needs of all the individuals including migrants and displaced populations so migration because of conflict or because of some war because of any such reason migration can be forced or it can be voluntary and can have significant implications for the health and well-being of the individuals and even communities and therefore it is crucial to conduct research that not only explores the health challenges faced by the migrants but also seeks to develop strategies and effective policies to ensure that their health needs are adequately met so uh, looking at some of the key 
aspects of migration and public health research with this perspective of leave no one behind. Researchers should aim to understand the unique health vulnerabilities of different migrant populations, including various important factors such as the reasons for migration, what is their legal status, what is their socioeconomic condition, what is their cultural background, and many others. Researchers can also investigate the barriers to accessing healthcare services that migrants may face, and it may include legal and administrative hurdles, language barriers, discrimination, lack of awareness about the available healthcare services. Considering the mental health implications of migration, including the stressors and the traumas associated with the migration process, researchers should explore the effective mental health interventions that can be tailored to the specific needs and specific problems of the migrant populations. Exploring the uh, impact of migration and uh, conflicts on the spread of infectious diseases is another key aspect. Um, and at the same time, it is equally important to develop strategies for uh, disease prevention and control within migrant communities and this is particularly important in the context of global health security. If we think about health systems strengthening, researchers can contribute to the strengthening of health systems to uh, better accommodate the diverse needs of migrant populations and it may involve training the healthcare workers, the providers, other important stakeholders, improving the cultural competence and adapting services to be more inclusive for the migrant populations. And finally, uh, coming to the topmost level, that is the policy level. For the policy makers, uh, we can provide policy recommendations. So, providing evidence-based recommendations for policy makers to develop and implement health policies to address the needs of the migrants, the, those populations is also important. And these policies should in, be inclusive and designed to ensure that no one is left behind in terms of the healthcare access and quality. So, uh, by conducting research with this perspective of leave no one behind, the goal of any public health researcher should be to contribute to more inclusive and uh, equitable health systems that consider the diverse needs of all the individuals, including migrants, regardless of their background and migration status. So, uh, addressing the health challenges associated with any type of migration, be it international or be it domestic, it is not only a moral imperative but also critical for achieving the broader SDGs as health and well-being of the people is interconnected with various aspects of sustainable development. So, we need collaborative efforts, we need uh, policies and a focus on health equity as important components of a comprehensive approach. In conclusion, creating an enabling environment for migration and health is essential for addressing the diverse challenges associated with migration, promoting human rights and fostering the well-being of individuals and communities that are involved in such tough situations. It requires a multi-stakeholder approach involving governments, civil societies, different organizations, private sectors, and even individual public health researchers. Thank you.